Hi everyone, hope you're all well. So in this video we will take a look at Exchange Online Protection or EOP for short and the configuration options are available to us. So EOP is shown in the diagram on the right. So EOP filters inbound and outbound mail in the cloud and through Office 365 that protects and scans against threats uh, such as spam and malware. So EOP is included with each Office 365 tenant and it checks mail flow traveling through Exchange online mailboxes. EAP is also available um, for on-premise workloads and, and hybrid environments as well. So included in the description are links um, to an EAP overview to understand how this is set up. So this is a guide for you to work with the AP settings and the configuration may differ for your particular setup or customer. So this is for you to review and change over time until they meet your requirements. So we will now take a look at the EOP configuration options available. Before we do, please subscribe to the channel and to be notified of regular content videos um, on Azure and Office 365 technical guides and certifications. Thank you. So during this video, we will look at the anti-spam settings, high confidence spam, bulk email, quarantine retention, um, what's marked as spam, you know, turning it off and on, um, connection filter policies, spoof intelligence, and actually sending and receiving messages based upon our um, spam settings. Uh, the malware filter settings, um, quarantine, the end user spam notifications, and also threat management. So let's get started. So if we take a look at anti-spam settings now, so to access these, we actually have two places now within the portal. This may change um, for in the future, but that's the way it's set at the moment. So there's one in uh, Exchange Admin Center, so click protection, and these are found under the spam filter headings. So the same settings are also found in the security and compliance uh, center anti-spam page. So we can access that under protection.office.com forward slash anti-spam and you can see I've clicked the links there within the portal. As you can see the spam filter policies are turned on by default and we can drill down into these to view and change the configuration if required. So let's edit the first one to see which options we have now. So we can see when a spam message is detected, its default is to move this into the junk email folder within the email client. However, there are other actions you can choose from when the spam is detected here. So we can add an X header, we can prepend subject line with text. So this can be a good option to notify users that a message is suspected spam. We can redirect messages to an email address so we can view all the spam that's being blocked. We can delete the message so we, we can only use this option when you're sure you won't miss a real message or we can quarantine the message. So this is a popular option to put messages into quarantine and then notify users uh, that this is the case. So with the quarantine spam, we will configure end user spam notifications. and We can take a look at these settings later on within the video. So the next is high confidence spam. So again, we can choose the uh, settings for messages that are classed um, as high confidence spam. And we could set this uh, to delete the message if it's classed as spam by EOP. So bulk email like marketing mails and newsletters and things sent out in bulk is usually not spam. So normally leaving this at the default threshold of seven, where one marks the most email as spam and nine allows the most bulk email to be del delivered is normally satisfactory. So under quarantine item retention, Microsoft stores all the quarantine items and maximum is 15 days. So the rest of the spam filtering options here are block lists, allow lists, which you can add here for email addresses or domains. We can also increase the spam score based upon uh, images within the message or URLs. And we can mark certain messages as spam. So for example, empty messages, I normally enable that one. JavaScript or VB script in HTML, I always turn this one on, so active content in, in emails is normally a risk um, for me. Frame or iframe tags, object tags, embed tags, and form tags, I normally enable all of those. 
So the web bug is typically a one pixel transparent GIF image, although it can be visible image as well. Normally turn that one off. So the other settings here depend on your SFP settings and undeliverable messages and NDRs, and if they're required for outbound mail when either um, using Exchange Online or on-premise for outbound mail. So most of these settings, if you're unsure of the impact of, of any of them, you know, you can uh, try it in test mode um, for a while first. However, any of these settings are specific to your environment and will differ between tenants and customers. So please check to see if these meet your requirements before configuring. So the international spam filter options are there to reduce spam for companies that have no global operations at all. So for example, we don't need to accept emails uh, you know, from other languages or different countries um, or regions. Um, you need to be a bit careful with blocking on countries or regions as the mail server being used could be in that country or region and you don't want any mail blocked. So connection filter policies, we can use uh, policies in EOP to identify good or bad source uh, email servers by their IP address. So this works by adding in IP allow or, or block lists here. So outbound spam filtering is also uh, always enabled by default when customers use this service to send um, outbound mail. So here you'd be able to provide a, an email address where external spam notification will be sent to. A copy of the actual spam message will be sent to the address so, so an admin can kind of verify where the uh, the message is, is originated from. And then uh, an additional setting that can also be configured is to send a, a notification email uh, when a user is blocked um, because of a higher number of spam messages being sent um, from it. And, and again, the admin will be able to unblock the email address from the security and compliance center. So we can also uh, set uh, recipient limits um, to configure the limits and actions um, for suspicious outbound um, email messages, a value from zero to 10,000. We can set external um, internal hourly limits and daily limits, and then we can perform a, and set an action um, when a user exceeds that limit. And we can set automatic forward and actions to control automatic email forwarding by users to external senders. So when a sender spoofs an email address, they appear to be a user in one of your company's domains or a user in an external domain that sends mail to your company. Spoof intelligent and policies are set up by default to help ensure that the spoofed email sent by legitimate senders don't get caught up in uh, an EOP spam filters or external mail systems, while protecting your users from spam uh, or phishing attacks. So within the portal here, we can review new senders, we can show senders um, that we've already reviewed and then decide if these senders are allowed to spoof uh, your users. Okay, so we're quickly going to um, demo with the default malware filter settings. We can successfully send a, an email with an XE zipped attachment. So if we send a mail from our external uh, mail account to our, our Office 365 mailbox with a, an XE in a zip attachment, um, when that actually gets delivered, we can see that the, the email is delivered um, which is not recommended really by default. So let's take a look at the malware filter settings in the next section where we can block this together with other settings. So when we go into the Exchange Admin Center, Protection and Malware Filter, we can see that if the malware uh, is detected in an email attachment, the message will be quarantined and will uh, will not notify recipients um, by default. So we want to enable notifications here. Also to block the XE we sent earlier, uh, we want to turn on blocking uh, of attachments. So we can uh, add remove um, from this list uh, and uh, XE is automatically present in the list. So let's turn this on. Um, we have uh, also notifications to senders um, of uh, the undelivered message that we can also configure here as well as uh, various other administrator notifications. So now that we have the blocking of attachments turned on, let's resend that attachment with the XE in a zipped um, format. Um, so when we send this now, we can see that the message is delivered, but a message is also attached 
um, to that message to say that the attachment is removed. If we go to quarantine within the portal, we can actually see um, that message has now been quarantined, um, and the the message can be uh, can be released, viewed, removed, downloaded, or submitted. So if we click refresh, we can see there's the message with those actions that we can apply to it. So when we enabled the quarantine action for spam, as shown earlier in the video under anti-spam settings, you should enable configure the end user spam notifications in this section here. So a quick look at the threat management dashboard, which shows threat protection status, management, top malware trends of sent and received emails, and also mail flow reports. So here we can access um, all our portals as well, um, instead of um, in, in the Exchange Admin Center. For example, what we have seen, anti-spam, portal, malware, etc., is contained within uh, this part of the portal. So thank you very much for watching the video. Please subscribe to the channel to receive updates on new videos posted weekly. All the very best. Take care and see you in the next video. Bye for now.